Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a malignant growth of the cervix. Worldwide around 500,000 women are diagnosed, which makes it the fourth most common cancer in women and the second most common gynecological malignancy. The average age of diagnosis is 48 years. Most cervical cancers are of epithelial origin and are due to an infection with the human papilloma virus, or short HPV, which is transmitted by sexual contact. An infection with this virus can lead to different histological types of cervical cancer. Histologically, the most common type is the squamous cell carcinoma, which makes up around 75%, followed by adenocarcinomas and mixed adenosquamous forms. Before we go further into the oncogenesis of these cancers, I would like to recap the structure of the cervix. The cervix is divided into an endocervix, exocervix and a transformation zone. The endocervix is the part that is lying towards the uterus and the exocervix is lying towards the vagina. The transformation zone is the area where those two parts meet. The endocervix is histologically different from the exocervix. The endocervix has a simple columnar epithelium, while the exocervix has a stratified squamous epithelial. So in the exocervix, the cells are smaller and stacked on top of each other. This makes it more resilient to external influences. In the transformation zone, those different types of epithelium meet and the glandular columnar cells transition into stratified squamous cells. With age, more and more of the endocervix bulges out towards the exocervix, which leads to an increased area of transformation zone, and so more cells will change from columnar to squamous epithelium. This change in cell type, called metaplasia, there is a risk for cells changing in a wrong way, leading to dysplasia, and in some cases, eventually cancer formation. Usually, an infection with HPV is not sufficient for causing a cancer formation, at least not in animal studies. So research suggests that other risk factors or predisposing factors are necessary for cancer formation, together with the persistent HPV infection. Those factors are smoking cigarettes, obesity, early menarche, so the onset of the first menstruation before the age of 10 years, promiscuity, so having many sexual partners, as well as a history of STDs, multiparity, so having had many pregnancies, as well as the use of oral contraceptives and immunosuppression. In the next point, I want to talk about the clinical presentation, the diagnosis and the treatment of cervical cancer. In early stages, cervical malignancies are usually asymptomatic. This emphasizes the importance of prophylactic annual checkups with a speculum examination and pap smear. This way, dysplasia or malignant transformations can be seen early. After a certain size and space occupation of the malignancy, women might experience metroragia, which means bleeding from the uterus in between regular menstruation. Discharge, pain and bleeding during and after intercourse and in late stages 
there can be symptoms from further metastasis. Metastasis occur generally speaking first via the lymphatic system to the parametrium of the uterus as well as the pelvic lymph nodes. Relatively late metastasis also occur via the hematogenous spread. The most often affected organs are usually the liver, lungs and bones. Luckily, there are a few measures a woman can take to reduce her risk of developing cervical cancer or to protect herself from an HPV infection. Those include to receive the HPV vaccine, which is recommended by the WHO for all young women, as well as to use a condom as a barrier contraceptive and to avoid multiple partners, as this increases the risk of contracting HPV or other STDs, as well as to attend the annual pap smear to check for malignant growth in the cervix. The HPV vaccine is recommended to be taken before the first sexual contact and protects women against the virus type 6, 11, 16 and 18. The type 16 and 18 have been identified to be a prerequisite for the development of cervical carcinoma, while the strains 6 and 11 are the major cause of genital warts caused by HPV. Besides the pap smear, there are other ways to diagnose an HPV infection or a cervical malignancy. Those include the HPV testing, which is a PCR test to detect human papillomavirus DNA and a histological examination to check for the presence of coelocytes. Those are cells that are typically seen in cervical cancer and indicate the cell changes that the epithelium undergoes after being infected with HPV. Another method is the conization, which is the surgical excision of a cone of cervical tissue that contains parts of the ectocervix and endocervix. This is either a diagnostic measure to obtain a biopsy of suspected malignant tissue or a therapeutic measure to remove precancerous tissue areas. In the next point I would like to talk about the treatment. The therapy depends on the size of the tumor but also the age and general health status of the patient. One option is the operative treatment. This is considered for very early stages, so stage 1 and 2. This can be either a conization or a trachelectomy. The conization I have explained before and in the trachelectomy is, as in the conization also, a part of the endo and exocervix removed. The great advantage of a trachelectomy is that it does not reduce the option for further pregnancies. In a conization it is possible for scar tissue to form and to lead to a stenosis of the cervical canal. The other treatment option is a radiochemotherapy, which reduces the risk of a reoccurrence more than if a radiation therapy is used alone. This is a discovery of the last years, as earlier a radiation therapy was recommended as a single therapeutic approach. The radiochemotherapy is done with a combination of radiation therapy and a platin containing chemotherapy, as for example cisplatin. In the last part, I want to talk about the oncogenesis of cervical cancer. So as we said, HPV is the main culprit of the development, especially when paired with additional risk factors. This is due to HPV expressing two viral oncoproteins, which are called E6 and E7. Those proteins bind to P53, which is a tumor suppressor gene 
which usually controls the cell division and cell death. And these oncoproteins inhibit this function, so the control over cell division and growth is lost, which is a key component of cancer growth. E6 and E7 oncoproteins from higher risk HPV strains, which are HPV16 and 18, give rise to cervical cancer, while E6 and E7 from lower risk strains lead to the formation of benign warts. Those strains are mainly HPV6 and 11. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.